Okay, good afternoon, um, year five. Uh, we're going to um, do something a little bit different for this session. It's quite an open-ended task, so it's really down to you. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You're gonna to have to really think about this. So, design and make your own space game, okay? I don't mind what you do, how you do it, but it must have a space theme about it. So let's talk through our PowerPoint. There are lots and lots of different examples of um, different space games uh, on the internet. If you want to do your own research, okay, you might have games at home, which I'm sure you do, that you could use as a basis to create your own game. So you might have Monopoly or something like that, and um, you could just turn that into a, a space monopoly and you might go around different planets, okay? So it's up to you. Here are some good examples. You can see um, this one that I've just put up has a hexagonal um, boards or card that you kind of create the board as you go through the game. All right, so what do you know about games? Um, this one here looks like you're possibly going to need a dice and you move your figures around uh, the board. It looks a bit like a maze, okay? And looking at it, there are four players uh, playing that game and it looks a little bit like it's based on snakes and ladders um, there, but the board is a different kind of shape. So that would be a good one to do. Here, um, we've definitely got a different type of game and it looks like you've got more than one figure. Um, so you've got four figures um, per team there. Okay, and we've got our classic uh, top trumps, which I absolutely love. So a space themed top trump game. So there are some ideas already to begin with, but again, it is really down to you um, what you want to do, what you want to create. So let's just think about this. What type of game? Is it going to be a board game? Is it going to be a card game? Is it going to be a role play game? Are you going to put questions into um, your space game and make your players Kind of have to think or make decisions um, within your game. How many players are you going to um, create your game for? Uh, what is the theme of your game? So is it going to be an invasion game? Um, so it might be something like where you have to battle against another team, a bit like chess or something like that. There might be a mission, like you have to get from one place on the board to the other place on the board. Somebody might try and stop you from doing that, okay? It could be based on a journey, again, and you might come into, um, a, you might have like problems as you go along. Uh, it might be light snakes and ladders. Uh, you're sent in a, a different direction all of a sudden. You might have to miss a go, things like that. So what are you going to need? What equipment? Um, you can use counters, uh, might have cards or dice, okay, to get your game going. Um, with counters, you can uh, design your own counters. They might uh, be counters that stand up and you could have little cardboard tabs at the bottom of them to help your characters stand up. And we'll have a look at some examples. So here is um, a War of the Worlds board game. Um, as an example, it's using a hexagonal kind of board there. So means that you can move in more than one direction if you use hexagons, okay? And there we've got examples where they have drawn the uh, character cards and they've just made them stand up using these little plastic holders. Now you could make that um, out of something. You don't even need um, a little holder. If you just put a tab or a flap on the base of your card, then um, your characters will stand up. Um, and that looks like an excellent game. Um, you might have to pick up cards as you go round your board. Okay. 
right? And there's another example of, you know, you could use something like pegs if you wanted to um, just have a look around your house. Even plasticine or blue tack would make your cards stand up. Now, the reason I'm showing you this one, um, with last year five, um, we had a really, really great time at making our board games. We didn't do it all in one lesson, so you don't have to create your board game and make it all today. You can take your time. Um, I made a War of the Worlds game, and I think I played it possibly with Jack Bobby um, quite a lot, in fact. Um, so be creative with your ideas. All right, let's have a little look. So other types of games that we know, um, in the bubble this time round, uh, we've been playing Battleships and you could completely use that game of Battleships and turn it into a space Battleship game. Okay, so you'd have to design your own um, cards to go onto your board, um, but you could play it in exactly the same way. There's our hexagonal paper, and <clears throat> you can see how you can change that hexagonal paper um, by colouring in different areas. So it's almost like creating a map. All right, so just another idea to put out there. And you might have dice from games that you've got at home. Some of these dice that we've got 20 sided dice, um, four sided dice eight-sided dice or whatever so you can make it really interesting now we're going to watch a quick clip hopefully a film um, and this just shows you uh, a very kind of basic design but it's really good i think they've just they've just rushed it a little bit but you could use this and develop it and make it a whole lot better there are some really good ideas in here so let's watch it might help you with some of your ideas. For today's project, I thought it'd be fun to challenge you to create your own game. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna designate the path that we're gonna travel on my game board. I create a start and a finish, and I lightly just sketch a winding path across the board. Next, I'm going to expand that line into sort of shape. So I'm gonna draw lines on either side of that central line that I drew. And I'm going to erase that guide that I created in the beginning. And next, I'm going to divide it up into segments, almost like sidewalk squares. So I have different spaces for my players to land on in my game. After I've sketched it all out in pencil, the next thing I'm going to do is add color. In this case, I'm just going to add color simply by outlining each of those boxes and I'm going to go in rainbow order. I'm going to use just six colors because I'm going to create a six-sided die with different colors later on. So I'm going to just continue in that rainbow pattern of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple until I've covered all of my spaces on the board. After I have designated all of those colored landing spaces on the board, the next thing I want to do is think about fun things that could give my game a little bit of a twist. I always think about different things I like in games, so I think about how on some games like Candyland, you might land on a certain spot and there's a shortcut up to another place or shoots and ladders, you move forward and back across the game board. So I might create some spots that are teleportation stations and maybe there, if I land on a certain spot, there'll be a dotted path to another spot. Or I might decide that I'm going to have a dance break spot on my game board. So when I land on that spot, everyone has to take a break and just dance for a minute. Or I might create a super silly spot, and whenever you land on that spot, you just have to do the silliest thing you can think of. Um, I would encourage you to think outside the box and just think about what would be something fun that breaks up the, the game. Maybe you're going to have a spot that's your barking lot, and anyone who lands on that has to bark like a dog until their next turn. Um, it's up to you, but think about things that will make your game 
have an unexpected twist because that can that can make it lots more fun. Now that I've designed my game board, I need to design my die. So I'm going to use my ruler and for simplicity, I'm just going to use the width of the ruler as my units and I'm going to make basically like a lowercase t that is five units wide and three units tall here. And then I'm going to cut it out. I want to leave a little bit of extra um, for my glue tabs around those two spots, those two spaces that are going off to the sides. And I'll get to that a little bit later. After I've cut out around the perimeter, the next thing I'm going to do is color the sides of my dice. I'm going to make one red, one orange, one yellow, one green, one blue, and one purple. That way, when I roll my dice, it will tell me where my player should land. Go to the next red spot, or the next blue spot, or the next purple spot, etc. It's basically like the Candyland system, except I don't really want to have to deal with all those cards. So a die seems like a simpler mechanism. Next thing I'm going to do is crease on all of those lines, and I'm going to put glue on those glue tabs to glue the sides together to make a cube. After I have my colored cube for a dice, I'm going to make my game pieces. For my game pieces, I'm just going to make four game pieces, and since I have so much color on my game board, I thought it would stand out more if I make my game pieces black and white. I'm just making four squares that have different patterns, different kinds of lines and dots on each of those. So I got to get a little bit creative thinking about what kinds of different patterns can I make to make each of those game pieces look different and unique so each player knows which piece is theirs. After I've designed them, I'm obviously going to cut them out. Now I have all the pieces that I need to play my game. Think about what gaming elements you like and how you can combine them to create your own new and unique game. Okay, excellent. I thought that was really good. Really um, interesting ideas there. I, I really like the use of um, or making your own dice. So you don't have to use numbers on a dice. You could use colors, you could use pictures. Okay, he had some really good suggestions about teleportation um, places to land on that will send you to another part of the board. You don't just have to have one track. You could have um, multiple routes to an end, okay, on the board. You don't even have to have an end point. Um, so there were some really good uh, ideas there for you to use, all right? Um, let's have a look now just a recap you could do um, a game that is a quiz so just based on facts so a kind of competition type of game okay and this is like using cards but obviously you need to know what the answers are yourself so you could do you could do a quiz if you wanted to Okay, here I thought this is excellent. Now, um, this is a chessboard made out of Lego. So you don't have to use card or paper. Um, have a look around, what, what have you got? So Lego is a brilliant way of making um, a board game. So I've got a Minotaur maze game, um, which is built from Lego. So you can do that if you like. Okay, and here's the game that they actually used um, in Star Wars was like a, a freaky game of chess. So you could probably check that clip out on YouTube as well. It's pretty cool. Um, what else do you need when you create a game? Just have a quick think. What are we missing here? Okay, I'm going to tell you what you need is a set of instructions. So don't forget that you need to have um, a clear set of rules on how to play your game as well so that's something else you need to think about so like I said it's quite an open-ended task 
At the end of last week, we talked about our DT and designing um, our model and we used a task wheel to help us with our planning. This is again another example where you could use the task wheel to help you plan out your ideas. Okay, it's a really, really good planning tool. Um, and it will take you through those different stages. So don't just get stuck and just think, I don't know where to start, I don't know what to do. Just ask yourself that question. What do I know about this already? What games do I already enjoy? Is there anything that I could magpie from something else and turn that into a space themed game? Okay, now I hope you have a really good time um, at planning and making, designing your game and of course playing it with somebody. Last year we had a fab time um, in class and we all got to play our games together. Um, unfortunately we can't do that at the moment but again it would be great if you could sit down and play your game with somebody at home uh, would be brilliant. Think about your audience, okay? Who's going to play your game with you? Right, guys, I'm going to say uh, goodbye. Have a really good afternoon. Um, take care and keep safe. Okay, cheerio.